Read in the name of thy lord and cherisher, who created man, out of a clot of congealed blood. Proclaim, and thy lord is most bountiful. He who taught the pen, taught man that which he knew not. Saran 96 The House of Wisdom is the preeminent centre of learning within the Iron Sultanate, being a collection of the finest minds that the Sultanate can produce. While basic classes are open to any who wish to take them, only the best and brightest are picked to engage in deeper study within one of the many schools of the house, and you must prove yourself to be beyond most humans in both curiosity and intellect to ever hope to learn all the secrets of the House of Wisdom. The libraries, workshops, forges, gardens of exotic and wondrous plants, hospitals and observatories that students and faculty of the house tend to are unmatched in the world, protected at brutal cost from any forces that would seek to destroy them. For they act as the most complete and accurate collection of knowledge in the world, and if they were destroyed it would be as if the achievements of man were just a memory, dust in the desert wind. For the house of wisdom, knowledge is the ultimate end, but the physical acts as both an anchor to guide their focus and a foundation on which to build. Further and more complete understanding is always the goal of the House of Wisdom, for to understand the beauty of creation and the mechanism by which it works is their ultimate goal. Within the halls of the house itself are many mechanical marvels and weapons of far off lands, as well as trophies captured by the Sultan's forces and brought to be examined by the learned scholars and inquisitive minds that lead the house. These studies have led to many advances in warfare for the Sultanate, and while the appearance of armours and arms will still follow tradition, the mechanism of their production has become far more advanced as the war against hell has progressed. Philosophers and theologists debate in their chambers and have been said to go for days without sleeping or eating, lost in furious discussion about the nature of life, the meaning of war, the arrival of the forces of hell, and poring over and endlessly interpreting and reinterpreting holy texts for insight into the wishes of Allah for the people of the Sultanate. These discussions are open to all who wish to attend, and great crowds have gathered, crammed into the debate halls to witness the best of minds try to answer the most complex questions that can be put to them. Ganzal and Kusadi poets compose verses describing the beauty and pain of life, or the joys of the summer dawn, and the heartache that can visit at the crackle of a campfire. It is said that a team of the most talented of these poets work tirelessly to record every heartbeat of the Sultanate, from the moment of the appearance of the Iron Wall in the Great Miracle, in one great never-ending epic. Every person who forms the Great Iron Wall of the two horns that pierce the sky, be they man, woman or child, is said to have their birth and death recorded within the poem, an ever-weaving tapestry of Allah's will. With such marvellous acts of intellectual pursuit, it is no wonder that the house attracts the greatest minds of the age to study it in its hallowed halls, both from within the Sultanate and from far beyond the Iron Wall. Many visiting dignitaries, religious scholars and academic professors have visited and added their knowledge to the House of Wisdom. The truly gifted and highly remarkable will be earmarked to ascend to the rank of alchemist, the most difficult study that can be performed in the House of Wisdom, and the vast majority who attempt this path will fail. After seven years of study, the student must create their own armour which they can use to channel the very elements of creation, offering them both power and protection. They must also create a homunculus, the artificial life to be used as a proxy for them when performing their most delicate acts of creation. There is no margin for error here, as the homunculus is either perfection given form with anything less than that being a failure, and that failure will often leave to the student alchemist's grisly death. The third step involves the opening of their third eye, and they will use this to study the vastness of existence and find the balance of creation itself. Few individuals possess the depth of knowledge and level of power of an alchemist, and it is only after passing all of these trials that the alchemists will become privy to the very deepest secrets of the House of Wisdom. There are parts of the house that many people could live a thousand lives and never see. 
It is in these laboratories, guarded by the faithful Kavas, the Jabirian alchemists dissect and study the war beasts of Shaitan so that their weaknesses can be laid bare and exploited by the believers. At such times, their roars of rage and pain echo through the porphyry corridors of the house. It is down in the very deepest of these corridors that the Alchemagi practice their most powerful Taquin arts, taking the lessons learned from the experimentation on the war beasts and combining them with their own powerful alchemical knowledge to create the terrifying lines of Jabber. Some put their time to tending the many powerful and rare tinctures and unguents that are used in the fortification rituals of the Sultan's prized Janissary warriors, while still more set their mind to finding improved formulas for the complex metals that they've learned to create by studying the very wall itself. To maintain a degree of independence, regardless of the royal funding, the House of Wisdom performs many services for the Sultan's armies. Their best alchemists work with the Sultan at foundries where the great cannons of the Iron Wall are cast. It is these very cannons that have repeatedly beaten back the advances of Hell, ensuring that no creature not of this earth is able to step beyond the great gates of al Qur'ain. Taquin creations are provided to bolster the army of those who believe as are suits of armour and alchemical ammunition. The House of Wisdom also maintains the Sultanate fleet of airships, which both guard the lands of those who believe against enemy air forces and maintain vigil over lands under darkness. As thanks, the separate arms of the Sultanate forces will pay handsomely for the support of the House of Wisdom, and it is these funds that allow for their most secretive experimentations. They make regular excursions deep into enemy territory to witness whether the great sandstorm still covers the two holy places, and then report the news back to the Sultan. Few others could possibly make this pilgrimage and return alive, and fewer still could hope to witness anything that might happen at these most holiest of sites and understand that which they saw. The House of Wisdom risks much for the Sultan to ensure that nothing can occur that they do not witness. In exchange, the masters of the House of Wisdom have freedom to dispatch their own excursions and expeditions into the lands beyond the wall, to seek tomes of knowledge lost in the dark and terrible days when the forces of Jehanum overran much of the Levant, and great cities fell like blossoms of a jasmine flower in fiery heat. Sometimes they are journeys to capture an especially ferocious beast of the enemy, it is the study of these beasts that has led to the terrifying efficiency of the Sultan's troops when it comes to dispatching them in battle. At other times they seek to capture or kill heretic alchemists which they see as an offence to their craft and a threat to the entire world. These journeys are exceedingly dangerous and they are not undertaken lightly. Each alchemist dispatched on such a journey is an irreplaceable loss and since they operate under their own authority they cannot expect direct support from the Sultan's forces. Many noble Faris cavaliers have taken oaths to protect these scholars on their journeys, as well as their own Kavas bodyguards, sworn to fight and die in defence of their masters. The Kavas are some of the most prolific hand-to-hand -hand fighters in the world, veterans of hundreds of skirmishes against the forces of hell, yet still alive to tell their tales. While these lack the presence of the Janissaries, Assassins and Yuspazi of the Sultanate's forces, they instead rely on the very same creatures created by the alchemist Taquin Arts. The Lions of Jabber travel with them, proud and terrible in their potential. The alchemists will even travel in pairs, combining their own power and knowledge and the might of their troops to ensure that whatever scrolls, Artifacts or monstrosities they seek do not escape the delicate studies of the House of Wisdom.